Hi everyone, this is Eva from so GPS. Welcome. In today's episode, we're looking at the fifth strategy that manipulators use in order to control you with their words. And today we're going to talk about another advanced technique that is taken from neuro-linguistic programming called layering. And it is not that common, but I would say that it's really good one to be aware of because sometimes it can happen almost accidentally when you are in the presence of someone who's just really good with their words. And as we know, a lot of sociopaths, narcissists are tend to be really good with their words because they lack conscience. So words are their main tool in order to get people to do whatever it is that they want. And um, in this particular case, I would say that layering could happen almost automatically when they're trying to pile a whole bunch of stories in your mind, especially if you are in a situation where uh, there's intimacy, you're being close, um, the atmosphere is conducive to planting deep seeds and thoughts and ideas. And one of those directions that um, they can take and the effects that they can create is something that's called future faking in which they're going to give you all of these ideas about what they want and about what they think about you through mirroring you and then it will they will make you feel like and think that they want you in their future and they want to have a life with you and so on and so forth. And they're very clever about this because they don't do this in a way that's in any way committal or clear. They use vagueness and it's almost like they are, you know, just kind of giving you these little seeds along the way and you fill in the blanks, if that makes sense. However, if if you're in the presence of someone who is using this technique that I'm about to explain to you called layering, then you can be sure that you're dealing with a very sophisticated type of a manipulator who is using something that was originally designed to heal people in therapy. That was, um, it, it, it's derived from Milton Erickson's hypnotherapy, but they're using it for covert purposes. And in my case, the way I got to learn about this is that my ex-partner knew this and, and was a student of hypnotherapy and he would very openly say that this is something he was doing as if almost, as if to gain trust and make me feel like, um, like, they're, they're, like it's okay now that I know this. But what I didn't realize at the time is that regardless whether you know this or not, it can still have an effect in a way that it will make you, it will lead you to, to have the thoughts that they want you to think, if that makes sense. And this particular one, uh, layering, what it does is it has this effect of making you think and believe that they're inside of your head, which is brilliant and scary. So I want to demystify it here and kind of give you an example of how someone can use this. Uh, so that if you if you notice yourself kind of getting lost in the weeds of, of someone's talk um, and, and they're leading you down the path and, and they're planting all these specific words and things they want you to think about and they're acknowledging that your, your thinking is in sync, then you can know that they're being strategic and they're using it for, for a purpose. Um, it might be just enough for you to kind of snap yourself out of the trance and be like, oh, interesting. You know, this is what they're doing. It's, 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 it's a form, I think that knowledge is power. It's a form of empowerment. So, so this is why I really wanted you to, this is why I wanted you to uh, know about this. So, so layering, um, the way to recognize it is that it's, 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 it's a form of storytelling where they start to tell you a story. It's generally, it happens, it starts in the present moment and it's anchored in the here and now. They will be describing things and slowly they're gonna kind of lead you down this meandering path of thoughts, like shifting imagery and shifting stories to the point where they don't, they're kind of connecting, but not really connecting. And then eventually they are going to kind of bring you back with them to make you think like you, that your thoughts are in sync and they can literally read your mind. So it's pretty bizarre. It's pretty powerful. So the goal is to make you think that they're inside your head, right? And so, um, and so I remember after years of this, and, and I, I literally mean years of this, um, 
at first it was really cool to me. I'm like, oh my God, I met my soulmate, right? They, he can read my mind. He can read my mind. The truth is he can't read my mind. Nobody can read your mind, but he can pull you into, or she can hold you, can pull you into their mind and make you think as if they're in your mind. So it's actually the reverse. That is true. So, uh, but over time of, uh, of, over a prolonged period of time of being trained this way, it made it, may, it can make you think that you're being constantly watched and you can elevate your partner to the level of a God. You know, like, wow, they are so omniscient. They're so omnipotent. They're amazing. They're more than human. So it makes you think that you're with this really amazing, powerful person, which in effect will make it harder for you to uh, separate yourself from them. And, and I think that a lot of sociopaths use this. Um, you know, for, for that exact purpose to have a lot of power over you. So again, like they begin to tell you a story and they, they're going to like shift and pivot, you know, it, it's going to make no sense. It's, it's a sophisticated form of confusion. And, and remember what I said in, in an earlier video I shot on, on confusion specifically that what's, what happens to a confused person and why it is such a vulnerable state is uh, and that's ripe for planting suggestions and commands is because when you're confused, when the mind is kind of lost in a fog, it is going to latch on to the first thing that makes sense. So really pay attention to what is being said right after when you're confused. And of course, a way to get out of confusion is to ask clarifying questions. So, so, okay. So, so how do they do this? So, so layering is highly metaphoric. Um, there's going to be a lot of imagery here. And the goal is to put you in a trance and once you're there, you know, they're going to, to give you a subtle command or a suggestion. So it's in order for you to think like, you're in, like they're inside your head. So it's a form of, before I get into it, I just want to say it's, it's, it's a tremendously destructive form of boundary breaking because ultimately it's like, you know, this is what the narcissists do is they, they, they gradually break your boundaries. They start with, you know, with your emotions um, you know, controlling them. And, and I've mentioned a lot about emotional abuse in earlier videos in the series here. So you can go ahead and watch them. Then there's the physical abuse, you know, touching you in a way that they want to, even though it might feel off and so on, making you do things you maybe no, not normally want to do. And this is kind of like, I would say this borders with spiritual because when, when somebody's in your head and you, you think that way, then it's like, it's weird. It gets, it gets to a really, really weird place. So Okay, so um, the other, the one, one more thing that I want to say before I give you an example is that uh, this can be used, and it was used in my case a lot f to elicit specific information. So if you, if you're led to believe, if you're led to believe that that person is literally inside your head that they can read your mind, then there are no secrets. So you can feel guilty and ashamed when you're in their presence and you're thinking a specific thought, for instance, thinking, oh my God, I need to leave this situation. This is bad for me. And then you're looking at them and they're looking at you, you know, and then you're like, oh shit, they can read my mind. So I just want to put it out there because it can have that effect. So if you, if you have, um, you know, if you have been there, if you feel that way, if you feel like you have no place to hide, it could be that this kind of technique was used on you. So, all right. So without any further ado, this is, this is for instance, what they're, what they may say to you. So, so it's just say that, that the situation is that you're listening to a song together. And so you're tuning in, there is, there, there's, you know, there, there, there's a background, um, a, a bit of a, a bit of a transy thing. There's an anchor that is happening as you're doing this. So there's, there, there's this music and, and they begin to tell you usually in a very hypnotic, subtle voice, something along the lines, like, you know, this song that we are listening to, you know, makes me remember the time when you and I were driving together down that road and uh, we both liked that place, you know, that place that we used to go to. And as we were passing through the woods and, you know, I wanted to, to stop the car and, and walk in there with you in order to to listen to the birds and tune into you and, and walk among the trees the same way that I am now walking with you in between your thoughts. You know, and you feel me, you feel me inside of you as, as I'm walking along you, you know, as I'm walking hand in hand in your mind and, and, and your thoughts are intermingling with my thinking. And, and in this moment, you know, in this moment, you and I are one. 
and, and there are no boundaries between us because, you know, you may want to ask yourself, like, how is this possible? But I tell you that true love has no boundaries. There, I can hear everything you're thinking, including the thought, the very thought you're having right now. Right? And in this moment, they can pause and they can like, ask you, okay, like, so what was that thought you were thinking, you know? Or do you care to share what you're, what you're thinking right now? So, you know, this is just one of many examples that um, that they can come up with. But the idea is, is that weaving you down this path of, of this imagery and, and, and taking you from this current moment down through like this metaphorical world into your mind and letting you know that they're there with you. So... You know, again, they want to they want to make you think like they're inside your head, and so that. But the truth is that it's actually the reverse. You're inside of their head because they're pulling you in to to to, um, you know, to to be in sync with whatever whatever it is that they're saying. So be aware of that. So, so uh, like I said in my earlier videos, if if somebody's using neuro linguistic programming in order, in order to control other people, I think that that's that's very evil. And that's really bad. You can be quite sure that you're dealing with somebody who's extremely toxic. And, um, you know, and, and this mental stalking here that, that, that we're talking about, this psychic stalking, just know it's not real. It's just that they can be so persuasive that they make you believe that it is true. And, um, and I think that a lot of people who are into like cults will make you, that will use this, especially if it's a form of spiritual abuse, you know, spiritual hypnosis and, and training to kind of break you down, break down your boundaries and make you believe that you are completely turned inside out. They can see everything. You have no place to hide. So if you've been through this, I know this is, this is maybe a little bit less of a common type of a, of a manipulation, but if you've been through this, know that you're not alone. Know that you're not, you know, there's nothing wrong with you. You're not crazy. It's just that you happen to be, have been um, manipulated and persuaded by somebody who is just uh, really good with their words. It's really, it's really this simple. And uh, you can definitely break away from that. Awareness is step number one. Asking clarifying questions, step number two. And if you happen to discern for yourself that you're de dealing with somebody who's then now is trying to hide away from you and, and lie to you and pretend like, you know, no, I would never do that or this and that. Um, then, and the decision is yours. Perhaps it's best for you and the healthiest for you to, um, separate yourself from that kind of person. Because when, uh, you're spending time with people who really truly love you and support you and who are open with you and who are, who are not hiding, who are not using double entendres or other manipulative tactics, then you can really relax and you can learn to trust yourself, heal yourself and, and really build a life that is anchored in reality instead of in fantasy. All right. I invite you to uh, check out video number six, um, next one, which is going to be on building associations. And, uh, and for now I'm saying goodbye and I will see you next time.